Lawsuits are stacking up against the University of Southern California with more than 300 students and staffers alleging that the school covered up the sexual assault of former campus doctor George Tyndall. Uh, this is a story that just uh, doesn't go away because it seems like every month people are coming forward saying that USC did everything they could to cover up the truth of what was happening. Uh, the, you know, my take on the, the, the real, I, I looked at this story and you try to find out what are the most salient aspects of the story. I mean, the salient aspects are what did, what did the girls report? What did the women report about what was happening? The, the thing that is inescapable is you've got the, um, you've got people who were assistants, staff assistants, and I think we learned this on another time that when, when we did this story, is that this is a doctor that was performing gynecological exams without gloves and commenting as, as he goes along and actually keeping him in a, a test that should last for 10 minutes was 30 minutes as he was using his bare hands to, to perform these, these, these gynecological studies. And of course, just as you expect, complaints were made, complaint after complaint made to USC and they covered up. Right, and, and this one is particularly disgusting because it's not just, oh, you, you a few students that, th more than 300 right now, more than 300. Right. And then, as you just said, you, you the staff, the staff also reported not just that kind of behavior because he was being sexually explicit with them, also hugely racist comments he was making to them. Well, it, this, was only, it was only racist comments that all, that actually started his downfall. Right. In yeah. other words, it wasn't the fact that he was actually molesting these girls year after year. It was the racist comment. All of a sudden, the U.S. says, "Well, we got to pay attention to that." Yeah. Well, and you know, this guy was basically the the campus on campus gynecologist. So the women there at the university had little option, you know, it was on campus, it was close, it was allegedly safe because it was campus sanctioned. So they go in there, then this happens, they report it to the school, woman after woman into the hundreds. The same stories though, it was the same right. kind of stories. It was saying he's not even using gloves, an exam that any expert gyne gynecologist would say, well, how long should this, how long should this exam last? How long should he be, should he be had, having his hands on breasts? How long should he be having his bare hand in a vagina? First of all, there shouldn't be any bare hands at all. Right. And so they kept hearing the same story. It wasn't like there was anything aberrational about it. I think it's interesting after they, they, they come up and they, they determine that he's making these discriminatory, sexually inappropriate comments as they describe it, then he, he sues the university. You know, he, he doubles down. He says, well, I'm gonna sue the university for what you've done to my career. And that's when all hell breaks loose and the rest of the stories are, are finally told because the truth is USC had the stories all along. Right, and, and that's, you know, almost as big of an issue as what Tyndall himself was doing because this is the same kind of behavior that we saw with the Catholic Church. We've seen it at Ohio State with USA Gymnastics. It's that the institution knew this was taking place, whether it's a university, a church, or whatever it is, they knew it was happening. They did what they could to cover it up. Penn State, another great example. And this is what happens. You cover it up. You don't get rid of the abuser. You don't stop the behavior. And you allow more women, due to your complacency with it, to fall victim to this guy. And that's why we're having such well, massive losses Yeah, I here. mean, look, look, it's not about, gee, we're trying, to, we're trying to protect the victims. It's never about the victims. Right. It's we're trying to to protect our staff member because A, if these reports are made, it hurts our reputation because colleges actually, they go about rating, how safe is your child going on this campus? That's something they look at and you know they publish material about that. It, it goes to the issue of the overall, uh, uh, the overall validity of <laughs> how much oversight there is going on in a university. You expect you put your child in university, you expect there'd be some oversight. Now we learn that the, these universities do just the opposite. And it's not just universities we're talking about. Right. But here you have universities where they actually have infrastructures right there at the university to when the victim comes in, what is the first thing they do? They get them to, to sign yeah, a dis, non-disclosure, non okay? We want you to sign a non-disclosure, really? 
What, well, you want a non-disclosure because you want to protect not the victim, and you're not doing it really even to protect the, the aggressor, you're doing it to protect the university. So the, what, what makes me so angry about the stories like this is because the university, it's all about what's our reputation, are we going to be sued? This is one reason they didn't do it, because they worried about being sued. If you get sued one time, other people hear about it, it's public, and then other people pile on because the same things happen to them. So one thing they do, and I, I, I just, that somebody's investigate this. Uh, I know in Yale, for example, we talked about this before, they got a system, somebody is attacked, they go, they meet with this committee. It's a committee that says, yeah. oh, well, we're going to take care of this. Well, no, you don't really take, they don't really take care of it. They have this person sign a non-disclosure and it dies there. Well, yeah, and, and another thing we're looking at here too is just the fact that when you have these, these institutions that help with the cover-up, which again, we're seeing in too many specific instances here, but Tyndall himself, right, at USC, in a position of power, right. abusing these women for years, and it even went on for at least one more year after the school realized yeah. they can't cover it up anymore. A year later, they finally put yeah. him on leave, but you have created this new generation, essentially, of women who have to carry this around for the rest of their lives. Yeah. Most no of them don't like to come forward because when they do, as, as you pointed out, they're, they're treated like they're making it up, that it's not credible. Then no investigation happens. They lose faith mm. in the entire process. Yeah. You've destroyed them on so many different levels. Yeah. And that's what's so disgusting. Well, part of the story here, Harvey Weinstein, for example, believes that he's above the law. And he's considering his payouts uh, to, to those in power. Uh, there's a chance that he, he might be right. I mean. It, this story on Weinstein, yeah. this, la this latest story on Weinstein, lands on Como, yeah. governor of the state of New York. We now know that, and this is a story that's been out there, but they held it back till after the election. This is really interesting. The way this story developed is this, it's been out there for, for quite a while. The media didn't pick it up because they, they, this was a hidden story. Some media members, it's like, it's like almost like uh, the, the, the very beginning of the story. The media wouldn't report the story. The media also didn't report that Andrew Como had actually gotten this huge, uh, what was it, $25,000 yeah, $25, from David Boys, okay? Who is, by the way, Harvey Weinstein's lawyer. And that all of a sudden we find out that the investigation into the Weinstein case disappears. Como ends up calling it off. 